Hello and welcome once again to Buckwheat Farms Magic Emporium and Ballroom. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit of uh, catch up on where we are farm wise. Uh, this I guess will fall under kind of the uh, sustainability uh, farming uh, category on my page and uh, eventually some of that that content will be moved over of course to the new page uh, at Galloway Place Farms when we begin to uh, operate that probably after the first of the year. Still be doing our microgreens through here. Um, I'll show you some information on microgreens today. But first, um, part of what we do here, uh, part of our, our heart and, and soul is about promoting local business and doing business locally and keeping our dollars and our, our energies and our love local. So uh, this week, Charlene and I had an opportunity to do that at uh, a local restaurant we've been meaning to try. Uh, I'll let you, if you don't mind, watch the uh, the review I did for them. This last week was uh, pretty rough as far as work was concerned. We had a couple of people call in sick, so we were short staffed. I picked up an extra shift and the shifts that I picked up were pretty brutal as far as the work. Not complaining, just a reality. So by the time yesterday came around, I was ready to, and anyone who's worked in the service industry will, will back me up on this. If you've been waiting on people all week long, you want to be waited on. And there was a restaurant that Charlene and I had been meaning to uh, to visit for a while uh, in town, Yola. And they've been in, in business now, I think two or three years at least, uh, maybe longer. Uh, but they're on College Street. I'll post a link to where they are uh, below. But uh, we've been meaning to try the place. And yesterday we finally got to go in there and wow, we were, we were blown away. Uh, from the time you walk in, really nice atmosphere, um, nice decorations, real comfortable uh, without feeling pretentious, uh, real welcoming environment. So then we're seated and th that's where the trouble starts because their menu, they have such nice sounding dishes that Charlene and I were having a hard time figuring out what we wanted to try now and, and what we would like to reserve for a a later visit and thankfully our wait our server uh, Grace uh, was so knowledgeable and really helpful with picking us through the menu so now I'll tell you about the the, the real star of the show uh, was the food uh, she, Grace suggested the uh, fried avocados and the Cuban cigars the Cuban cigars first of all I'd ask about the fried avocados she she suggested those and then the Cuban cigars. The fried avocados were were nice. It was a, it was a little bit of a of a a texture uh, you had to uh, thing initially because um, if you're used to other fried uh, vegetables, there's a little bit there a little bit of firmness there. But once you got past that, it's a, a nice appetizer, uh, really nice, uh, well uh, accompanied as far as the sauce. Now, the Cuban cigars, Cuban cigars were out of this world. They're, they're wontons that are fried, but inside the wonton is a combination of ham and uh, collard greens. And, uh, and they come, the presentation is wonderful. I'll, I'll, sh I, I'll post the pictures down below of, of everything that, that I, I, I'm uh, describing here. But the presentation that is being served in this Cuban cigar box was really out of this world. Again, those were the, pretty much the start of the show. Charlene then had a uh, smoked corn chowder and chicken empanadas. The smoked corn chowder was nice, well rep, uh, presented, uh, very tasty dish. The chicken empanadas were probably the weakest point. But again, empanadas are empanadas. And, and we have had been fortunate enough to have some really good empanadas. And if you've ever had really good street truck empanadas, those are about the best in the world. But uh, these were these were good. They were, but but again, empanadas are empanadas. Unless they're out of the ballpark, they're pretty much standard fare. I had uh, stuffed poblano peppers. Uh, the poblano peppers uh, were nice. Uh, had a mild flavor to them. Uh, I enjoyed the stuffing. Um, the, I like to use uh, a little bit uh, spicier sauce myself, a little bit warmer, but, um, I know this, this is kind of a, a, a Cuban feel to it and, and that it doesn't have the heat that some of the, the Mexican dishes with poblano peppers have in them, but then, um, dessert, uh, and again, service outstanding throughout grace, kept our drink glasses full, uh, kept my beers, uh, full and, uh, we were really taking well, good care of. Uh, so then we decide on dessert and for dessert Charlene gets the ice cream sandwich. It's a it's a chocolate chip uh, cookie 
with uh, ch chocolate cookie dough ice cream, I believe it was, on the inside. And I had chimichurras with, again, the ice cream, the same ice cream. And the ice cream, I told Charlene when we were eating the ice cream, uh, I'm not really big on, on overly sweet desserts, um, especially ice cream. And I said, this ice cream has just the right amount of sweetness. I said, I bet it's made in-house. She said, oh, there's no way. So on the way out, we, we met the, uh, the owners and, and uh, you know, told them about how much we enjoyed everything. And, uh, and sure enough, my palate won out again. The ice cream was made in-house. Uh, it's a really nice, beautiful restaurant. Not too expensive. Um, Charlene and I, with all of that and beers uh, and a hefty tip, walked out with just a little over a bill. So um, it's not not bad at all. Um, you enjoy it. If you're in the area, again, this is part of what we do at Buckwheat Farms is promoting local businesses, uh, buying local. This is a locally owned business. You can make sure your dollars and cents and your love and attention stay locally. Buy local. Namaste. Okay, so really good place to eat. You should check them out sometimes. Now, uh, back to what's going on here. Uh, I've got a couple of videos I cut this morning over working with some of the microgreens and getting uh, some carrots in. Uh, I'll let you watch those now. So today we're going to get our uh, carrots started. I'm going to start my carrots inside in the uh, microgreens grow room. I'm going to be putting in some happy, happy frog. Uh, has some bat guano, earthworm castings, really really should be nutrient rich into these greenhouses and then putting carrots seeds in these cells and then uh, leaving them to uh, to germinate in the in the uh, microgreen room so uh, so I filled each of these uh, each of these cells uh, three quarters of the way full with the uh, with the uh, the happy frog soil mix and then uh, topped it off with um, about nine to twelve seeds actually in each cell of, uh, of these organic carrots, the rainbow mix. Um, and I'm gonna do something, kind of a mix between microgreens and, uh, and, and growing uh, plants to, uh, to transplant to the garden. In that uh, I did overfill seed-wise these cells. And what I'll do is when the, uh, when the sprouts come up, I'll trim them to uh, about three per cell maybe uh, six per cell, we'll see how, the, how far apart the sprouts are. And then uh, when we put them in the soil uh, outside, the fractable soil, if we make the soil fractable enough, uh, we can plant the carrots that dense and get a, a good return on our, our, our uh, crops. So with that said, we're gonna put the dome on and put this one away and then repeat this with a second trip. So I used this uh, Ferry Morris uh, Pro Hex Kit, uh, 72 cells to sow my uh, starters for my uh, Brussels sprouts and broccoli. I've got Brussels sprouts up top on these three area rows here, broccoli these three rows here, and I've got enough broccoli seed to sow another cell. Um, I, again, I've sown these rather thickly because I'll, when I thin them, I'll just um, eat those microgreens. I, since we found out how good they are and how nutritious they are, uh, seedlings are no longer uh, seen as a waste. So we uh, finish up with two trays of microgreens. I've got uh, on the bottom, I've got uh, purple, organic early purple Vienna kohlrabi, and on the top, uh, organic uh, daikon sprouting radish. Both are uh, really colorful, really flavorful. Uh, we'll see, look at those in the next three days and see how they come along. Speaking of microgreens, this is uh, what I've got from the last a crop of turnip greens, uh, microgreens that I sowed in here. Um, this is six trays. Uh, I've already harvested three trays, so we had nine trays total, and then a tray of buckwheat down there, which I've already harvested. That may uh, be about ready to go to the animals now, which is good animal fodder as well. But uh, these are kind of, I'm kind of experimenting with this room, seeing what it'll do. These have had a lot less hands-on necessity. Um, you can see they're starting to show a little bit of that uh, in some spots. But this is it with with stretches of three days in a row where I absolutely did nothing except let them sit over here. There was moisture in here, so it's really um, it really is uh, is encouraging for the uh, the concept of using this room for the microgreen. Now, on the microgreen front, those buckwheat microgreens I brought home, Charlene and I ended up tasting them, and that is a really good length, a good flavor for them to have. 
I had never actually let my, my buckwheat microgreens grow to that length, but I think that is, it's really nice. It makes a nice looking garnish, it has a really good nutty flavor, almost like a green peanut kind of, uh, but without the, the yik that you get with the green peanuts. Uh, but it was really nice. And speaking of the microgreens, we will have, after the first of the year, uh, a big announcement to make. We're, we're really getting geared up. We're going to start um, getting into, to, um, in fact, once I'm done with these videos and, and some chores around here, my evening is going to be spent on mapping out uh, how we're going to get into some, some uh, markets uh, and what the strategy is we're going to use going forward um, to contact some of the chefs. That was the reason for the... Uh, the, the radish and the uh, kohlrabi those are two really popular uh, really popular products among the local shelves chefs so uh, I'm also going to get some um, some bull's blood uh, beet seed and uh, another popular seed uh, that and amaranth uh, I think it's the color and everything but anyway uh, also I know everyone is always concerned about our piggies and so uh, I'll give you couple little shots here below our piggies are doing well we've harvested uh, a couple of pigs uh, of our own one of them was Loki um, that one stung a little bit uh, harvesting Loki uh, he was one of my first pigs but I had made the, the decision a while back that I'm going to use Zeus as my breeding boar um, I've, I've gotten to handle him a lot more here and so he's a lot more comfortable around me I don't uh, Loki had gotten a little bit randy if, if those of you who have goats know what I mean and uh, and had gotten a little bit aggressive towards me and uh, just for my safety and his safety uh, it was best for me to go ahead and harvest it but when when the shot went down uh, Matt asked me he said he said that one hurt a little bit and it, and it surprised me because I we at that point we already processed you know um, a couple of my pigs and uh, but that one yeah that one stung a little bit so maybe we shouldn't name our animals that's that's maybe the the uh, <laughs> the uh, the lesson I should take from that, but uh, anyway, I, I you can see see from the pictures we've got uh, the herd kind of, and I'm going to be thinning that herd a little bit. Uh, I'm going to this in this next week start putting some of the little ones up for sale, um, and, and and we've got some information on that or, or some some news on that coming up about two. We're, we're working on something uh, for the process again so that we can actually. Uh, Finding processors and, and and accessing processors is a real issue here for a lot of people who raise their own animals. And so we're looking at the possibility of, of maybe constructing and putting together a, uh, a mobile uh, processing unit. See what the, what we're at least starting in the uh, pr uh, preliminary stages of, of looking at, at what all is involved in, in doing that and, uh, and, the, and the way that we want to we'll go about it. But uh, anyway, so those are those are all the things that are happening on the farm. Um, I will be posting another video um, later on this evening um, on my Udom site, uh, part of the site, the Udom channel, I guess it is. Everything we do is magic. So if you've uh, been following me there, uh, look for that coming down tonight. But anyway, uh, things are going really good here. We're, we're just really positive about everything that's going on. Uh, everything's happening the way it, exactly the way it should be. And what we're finding is all the resources, as we're as we're just moving into it, all the resources are kind of like trailing in. We're creating that vibrational wave and we're moving in. And I hope that's happening with you too as, as we move into this new year. Those of you who've been really uh, pushing up against it and, and, and bumping up against it throughout this year, I think uh, this is the turning of the, of the corner uh, with, this, with this solstice. Uh, so anyway, I hope you have a great day weekend great rest of the rest of the week uh, we'll probably do at least one more update about um everything at the farm here and, and what our plans are as far as uh, how we're going to get everything moved and, and and all of that and when that's going to be happening uh before before the end of the year hopefully that's our goal anyway uh hope you're having a wonderful week hope you have a wonderful weekend uh enjoy this yule season namaste